a lot of things. I came a time when women's jeans came with fake pockets. I mean, come on. If it doesn't make a little flap or a pocket that's only one inch deep, why even put it there? I've seen people put peanut butter on one slice of bread and then spread the jelly on top. You put peanut butter on one slice, jelly on the other, and then you put the two together. Not calculus, people. I've seen people debate that climate change doesn't exist. I mean, I guess we were all going to die sometime soon anyway. I've seen so many things that I decided to post about it on Twitter. I consider myself a crusader. Eventually, I realized that sitting in the bathroom and angrily tweeting how I couldn't open a pickle jar didn't make me an activist. It made me the former president of the United States. <laughs> but I'm not alone. We all seem to think that by merely liking something on social media, we are activists for the movement. For example, when I first heard about George Floyd's death, I remember myself posting articles on my Instagram story, trying to spread awareness on the issue. We all did. We were all mad at the lack of the action on the issue. We posted black squares. We changed our profile pictures. We were disgusted. But with this torrent of emotions that we all felt, I noticed some things we lacked to do. For instance, did we ever question whatever happened to the officers and people that killed George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery, and so many others like them? After we post about a movement, we seem to entirely forget about it afterwards. This leads me to my central concern today. By trying to spread awareness on the internet and other online platforms, we deem ourselves activists. We'll analyze this problem through three steps. First, we'll look around for our real pockets and see how deep of a problem this is. Next, we'll take a bite into our correctly made sandwiches and taste how this problem was made. And then finally, we'll debate some solutions and bring an end to this liking situation. Now, kind of like how Trump messed up the Twitter, we messed up the ideology of activism. Public streets and spaces from time out of mind have been reserved for the purposes of assembly. These places have been part of the rights, privileges, immunities, and liberties of citizens. Take the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in 1939 when defending the ability to go out and protest on streets. Today, we believe that by clicking on a like post, we've done the same amount of action as going out and participating in a rally. We don't realize that some actions are more constructive than others. Today, there is a lack of real activism. Instead, replaced by slacktivism. And Jenny Morisov, in his book, To Save Everything, Click Here, defines slacktivism as an app term to describe feel-good online activism that has zero political or social impact. Zero impact can be seen especially around the world today. When we heard about the numerous COVID cases pop up locally, nationally, and globally, we seemed our work done to contain the virus as soon as we used hashtag flatten the curve. But did we even hold our own family and friends accountable when they wouldn't even wear a mask? Just recently, when we heard about the, re the recent spike in Asian hate crimes, we deemed our work done as soon as we pulled out our thumbs and typed, Asian lives matter. But did we ever Google the victims' names, the repercussions they face right now, and the after effects they're suffering through? Right now, Uyghur Muslims are being forced into concentration camps where they are forced to renounce their faith by the government. 
who knows? The next thing that will capture our attention, that allow us to remain in our seat. Now, kind of like how I feel like I'm doing work when I'm actually cheating off of my friend next to me, we feel like we're doing work when we, say, hit that like button. But why do we feel this way? David B. Feldman, an associate professor at Santa Clara University, explains, as humans, we have a sort of psychological desire to partake in political matters. This itch can only be satisfied if we are under the illusion that we are taking action. Slacktivism? is dangerous because it's enough to satisfy that illusion. Thus, the more spread slacktivism is, the more inefficient action results, inherently promoting no activism at all. But other than our desire to take action, there's also our seek for others' approval. When we've seen, that others have seen, that we like something, we feel confident that we appear good in their eyes. Thus, with our desire to be as good human beings being fulfilled, we don't see any need to commit to doing anything else. In fact, in a recent study published by the University of British Columbia, it was seen that those who partook in a form of public token support were just as likely to take action as those who hadn't been even exposed to the movement at all. go like something. You've done the same amount of action as someone who didn't even know the movement existed. But then, there are those of us who truly believe that by liking something or double tapping a hashtag, we've done the best that we can do. That that is the most that we can do. In response to this likely situation, former President Barack Obama well summarizes the issue with these words. That's not activism. That's not change. If all you're doing is casting out stones, then you're not going to get that far. In order to cast something more than stones, or likes in this situation, we have to realize that there is something more that we can always do. Now, in a game or sport, in order to win, you have to have a game plan on how to win. If you don't, well, that's how you end up like me, in speech and debate. A plan gives certain ideas on how to execute some form of action, something that many movements don't have. In order to combat slacktivism, we have to do something. Now, I'm not saying to completely abandon the idea of social media. I'm just saying that only starting something on Twitter isn't a movement. That only liking something on Instagram isn't an action. While those things may bring attention to a cause, they don't constitute for it. To understand this situation, Mary Frances Berry, a historian at the University of Pennsylvania and one of the key founders of the Free South Africa movement, helps us realize that for the media to cover something, the people in it have to do something. Which is why showing up is still required. Something that we can all do, whether we realize it or not, is to go vote. This year, we've had the highest turnout in the country's history. And we need to keep holding each other accountable, maintaining that it remains that way. We as the public have the power to decide who comes into office and makes a change. We have the power to decide if we want to make a change. Last year, I was only 17. But you better believe that this year and in the future, I will be the scariest thing that you can imagine. I will be a woman. I will be a Muslim. And 
I will vote. I will make a difference because I will be there every day. We all can. We can force politicians not to dismiss us as right, but as people who care and demand action and will vote. Today, we've explored how we've lost the ideology of activism due to our lack of knowledge and illusion of action. To combat slacktivism, we have to be present in the movement, not just online. We have to bring an end to this pseudo-action and call upon real action. Then, can we bring it together and all band together and bring an end to this lightning situation?